Hi there. So in my last example, the string example, where I show you how to uh, basically work with strings and I introduced substrings. And if you had followed along, you had realized that, oh my gosh, I get this lovely warning that substring to, as well as substring from, it has been depreciated. Um, actually, it's both substring to, but substring one from has also been depreciated. So I wanted to kind of address that and kind of introduce it as well because uh, when, when I went into the documentation, it wasn't extremely clear uh, and you'll see what I mean. So uh, if you went into the documentation like I did, you looked up substring and you're like, okay, I, this is kind of interesting. <laughs> So basically what we need to do now is we don't have substring at all. So we're going to throw that out of our mind. We now have these operators, which is a dot dot and the less than sign, I believe it's called. <laughs> Might be called a carrot. Don't know. Um, <laughs> so we need to first get an index of what we're looking for. In this case, what it's doing is it's looking for an index of this comma, and then it uses a null coalescing operator. And what that does is that it unwraps an optional if it contains a value, and then the end index. So it'll go through the whole thing and see if there's a comma. If it isn't, it won't unwrap it. If there is, it will. And then what we do is we insert it into the, well, kind of looking for the range. So by inserting it into the subscript. So that's how we will pull out what we want from the string. So we're going to give it a range. We're going to say, okay, from this point to this point, output something. And so in this case, it outputs hello. So if, if you're wondering, okay, well, what about this from? Um, let's see here. I show you this example. So basically what I did is I just went to string example and create a new playground page. So if you want to go ahead and do that, so you, will, so you have it in one place, go ahead and do that. If not, that's fine. Um, but if you did substring from here, you see that it says, please use slicing subscript with partial range from. And then if you look at the two, it says partial range up to operator. And I really wish that the documentation here had both of those there, but they don't. So, well, they have both, they have the first one, but not, but not this, not, not the second one, which is the from. And so if you, you know, we're like, okay, wh where do I find this? Well, if you go into the developer documentation under string, you'll find it. Um, I suggest you uh, hit uh, command find or command F and type in the dot dot less than sign and then search for the first occurrence. So basically this is under accessing string elements. So first we retrieve the first word of a longer string. You need to search for a space and then create a substring from the prefix of the string up to that point. Now if that isn't clear as mud, I don't know what is. So, so basically the same thing as the other example. Now, if you're saying, okay, well, you said there was two or three, there is. So keep going, keep going, keep looking, and boom, you'll find creating a range expression. So here we have range, partial range up to, not including its upper bound. We have partial range extending upward from a lower bound and a partial range up to and including including its upper bound. If you notice, we have two, two periods and the less than sign, then three periods and three periods. So basically they reuse the same thing. And really the only difference between the two is where you position it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I am going to show you a really quick example. So I basically have some strings to play around with. You don't have to do exactly what I do. You can do something else, but try to have your one of your strings have um, two new lines, two, two new line characters. Doesn't matter where you choose. And then a really short, um, short string that has no new line characters because I'm going to be looking for new line characters as well as showing you offset. Okay, 
So, <laughs> uh, we have some serious issues here. Um, as we see, it says uh, substring 2 depreciated. And actually, I should have should have deleted that. Okay, so sorry, I, I meant to delete that before I went on, but so basically we have this error here that says substring 2 depreciated, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to leave that there. So following the example from the documentation, it says that we need to create a range. So let's go ahead and do that. So we do a constant range because it's not going to change. And then it said to pull out what you're looking for. So what character you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for the index of a new line. So greeting dot index of a character. And that character is a new line. So forward slash n. And then they did the null coalescing operator. So we'll go ahead and do that too. And then they said the end of. So we're going to search the whole entire the whole entire string. So we do dot end index. Okay, and then the next thing they said that we need to do is we need to kind of treat this like um, an array of, of sorts. So we're basically going to give the range and say, okay, find this from this starting point. So this is going to be our starting point. So if we do greeting and then the square brackets, and again, we do the dot dot and the less than sign and do range. And have that equal title. So I'm going to do let title equal this. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Okay, so we see we have exactly the same result as above that has been depreciated, the substring 2. So that is a replacement for substring 2. So let's get substring 2 out of our mind because it no longer exists. <laughs> okay, but then if you look here, we have the title and it prints out the new line here. And I'll show you how to get rid of that in just a second. But basically, um, I just want to kind of show you that. And also, we don't no longer need to do title, characters, count either. And if you notice up here when I did the index of, I completely took out characters because we don't need to do that anymore. That's another thing that's kind of been, it's not necessarily depreciated. You still do it. It'll still work. If you doubt what I'm saying, I'll just type that in there right now just to show you that it does still work and it shouldn't have any issues. Nope, no issues. Still prints out the same thing. So I just show, showed you a shorthand version of that. So that's one less thing you have to type, which is awesome. <laughs> and I realized that after the fact. So uh, thank you to one of my subscribers who, you know, said, hey, you don't need to do characters anymore. I'm like, oh, just realized it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So you don't have to do that anymore. All right. So now you're wondering, okay, well, what about this offset thing that you did before? Well, we can still do that. It's still valid. Uh, if you notice uh, the characters, um, the index of still works. Same with offset, index offset still works. So let's do that. Um, if you're wondering why it doesn't have any values, it's because of the fact that um, it's doing a title count. So if we reverse this, we can totally reverse this. I'm gonna reverse it right now. So it'll run the second part of this else statement. Um, you'll see what I'm saying. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just saying offset by 37. I'm not saying new line at all. Okay. So it's not looking by new line. It's looking by how much I offset. So this should be 37 characters um, that outputs. And then I tack on to this by concatenating the, the, you know, three periods. Okay. So let's redo this one. So again, we can do the range and then set the title, but I'm going to show you the shorthand because the shorthand is pretty awesome. Okay, so we're going to do um, let long title. This is ignoring the new line because uh, we're not looking by the new line. We're just looking by um, a set number of characters. We do greeting in our square brackets. And again, we do the dot dot and the 
the less than sign. And then we can actually just pull in this here. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. And then we do the plus and the extra stuff. Okay. It's giving me an error because um, I haven't used the variable yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do a print statement here and say that this is long title. Okay, so now I should get rid of that warning about, oh, you're not using the variable. <laughs> okay, let's test this out, see if it works. And oh my gosh, it totally does. And if we see here, it um, completely outputs the long title. Let's go up. So it prints out the long title. Um, so now you're probably saying, okay, well, this long title but it has a new line there. Well, we can get rid of that. Um, one thing we can do is do the dot replacing occurrences of, and we'll remove the new lines that are in there with nothing. So we'll replace it with nothing, basically. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there we go. Now it's all in one line. There's no new line characters in it at all. So I showed you quite a bit there. <laughs> but it does make it way more concise. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is the opposite, so substring from. So now we're gonna be starting at some particular point within inside the string that isn't the beginning, and we're gonna output. Okay, so here we have our original substring from, and it's yelling at us. So let's go ahead and create something else. So we're gonna do um, let Actually, I'm going to do make this old snippet. Snippet old. And let this equal snippet. All right, so I'm going to be using the range that I set up here because basically this will find the first um, new line. And I'm going to have that equal to greeting and my square brackets. And then I'm going to paste the range in and do the three dots behind it. And as you see, it completely outputs what comes after that. What comes after the first new line. And if you see here, it still breaks off the new line there as well. And then we can also do this replacing occurrences of new line with um, nothing. So I'm going to have you know, basically remove it, do the dot notation there, and then let's try it again. And we will find out that it becomes one long massive line with no new lines in it. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, so the next thing, um, so, so that's basically the snippet. Pretty, pretty awesome. Um, now, if you noticed, well, maybe I don't want to remove that second new line here. Maybe that's part of another sentence or whatever. You don't want to edit that. Well, what you can do instead of um, that is you can actually offset by one. Um, you can offset by one, basically. So again, here's a substring from and then with an offset. So let's go ahead and replace this one. So we're going to do a snippet and then our wonderful little brackets here. Same deal. We're going to do range. Actually, we can do, because we already have the snippet here. So all we're going to do is we're going to do the index. So let's copy that and paste it inside of here. And then because we want to start at the very beginning, we'll do dot, dot, dot. As you see, the new line is completely gone now. Unlike before, where it was. 
And if you need proof of that, we can always print this out. And as you see, there's no new line at all in there. Because if there was, it would have, you know, moved it down. I can prove it here, this one. Well, I'll print it right underneath it. As you see, there's a complete space there. So there we go. Uh, so that's how you do offset. So um, you can definitely try playing around with this a little bit more, pulling um, a title and snippet from a string without a new line. I kind of showed you that in a way. Um, if you want to take a swing at it, great. Otherwise, let's go ahead and fix our app example with the substring issues that we have here. So basically, I was want to return just the contents of the new letter N, otherwise, um, do the offset. So let's go underneath here and do content. Actually, let's set the range. So let's go up here. Let's create that range. So let range equal content. We do the new line, characters of N. Let's remove the characters because we don't need that anymore. And then do the null coalescing operator and do content and index. Okay, so now that we have that, then we can do content. So this is two. So we do the uh, dot dot and then less than sign and then range. And this is offset. So we're going to do content we'll copy all this here, paste it here and do the dot dot after the three the three periods. Let's remove the characters and remove this here. Okay, so it's asking, so it's telling me I can't uh, do a conversion here uh, from a substring, and that's what I was mentioning before. That if you want to use this as a string, uh, substrings are only held in memory temporarily. So we actually have to convert it into a string. So we just do the string conversion here, and that should satisfy that issue or that error message. Let's drop to the end save. Okay, let's go ahead and do the assistant editor. And let's run this bad boy. Okay, so if we run this, we see that uh, it does appear hard choices, easy life. So there we go. Um, we fixed it and it looks a lot, a lot cleaner now. Um, it was kind of convoluted a little bit, but it does make a lot more sense. Um, being that you can now just do it at the end or in the beginning. Um, so yeah, this can actually go at the end or at the beginning. So I can show you that too. Shouldn't have an issue with it. Nope. So you can use that as well. And I believe the only difference is whether it includes the new line or not, I believe. Yep, so that's the only difference is whether it includes or excludes the, the new line, so that last um, index. Okay, <laughs> so you don't necessarily, so that's how you remove like the new line from the end, is either doing the up to, so up to but not including its upper bound, so I, the, that's what this one is, um, where the other one is partial range up to and including its upward bound. So that's the difference between the two. 
So hopefully this has helped you out, maybe enlightened you or whatnot. If so, you know, just give it a thumbs up. If you want to get more info from me or when I upload new videos, you will have to subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, friends, keep calm and code on.